So we're in Exodus 14. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, that's okay. Actually, we grab this and we can move it over here. This is something that we're going to talk about later. I'm just going to balance it here. It falls. <laughs> Not so much. Okay. Hold on, Mom and Bryce. I got. Oh, thanks. Okay. I'm setting up a board for later. Um. So uh, we have the role of God, Pharaoh, Israelites. Do we want to divvy out roles? Or do, should we take turns reading? Let's just take turns reading. Okay. All right. Well, I guess I'll start. Um, <clears throat> Exodus chapter 14. Now, we're, this is important in Bible we just read through it, and then we talk about it. It's pretty simple. But, uh, well, let's actually, let's look at 13, what happened in 13. They just crossed over the sea. So, then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to turn back and encamp near Pihahira, between Migdal and the sea. They are to encamp by the sea directly opposite Baal Zephon, and Pharaoh will think the Israelites are wandering around the land in confusion, hemmed in by the desert. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them. But I will gain glory for myself through Pharaoh and all his army, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord, so that the Israelites did this. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their mind about them and said, What have we done? We've let the Israelites go and we've lost their services. So he had his chariots made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 of the best chariots. Isn't the chariots arm? Um, they're, uh, they're basically, they have horses on them and you ride them in battle. Um... He took 600 of the best chariots along with all the other chariots of Egypt with officers all over all of them. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, so that he pursued the Israelites who were marching out boldly. The Egyptians, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, horsemen and the troops, pursued the Israelites and overtook them as they camped by the sea near P. the Heroth opposite Baal Zephon. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to God. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us out near the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out to Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, Leave us alone, don't let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Moses answered the people, uh, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance of the Lord who will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. 
Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. Um, the pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to the one side and light to the other side. So neither went near the other all night long. Um, do you guys know what's happening here? Mm, I'm guessing no. it's I'm guessing they're talking about well, I know they're talking about God, but um, I bet they're talking about like reasons or like options. I think. Hmm. Well, what's happening is um. Man, I wish I had a, I think I have some markers out here. Um, So this is, I think I can just write on the window here. <laughs> Mom, Bryce, I'm going to take a second to draw out a picture of what's going on. All right? Oh, no, those are illegal. Okay. Illegal? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Against the law? Illegal is nothing. So here's this ocean. Here's this sea, and it's giant. It's huge. Uh, and here's, here's this other side. And uh, okay, so this is water. It's okay. I'll just wipe it off. Okay. <laughs> so here's some water, and uh, oh wait, they've already crossed the sea. No, no, this is the time when they're crossing the sea. This is a good time to join the Bible study. Okay, so we have good, godly person, Moses. He's good. God the guy. He loves, loves the Lord. And he has a bunch of other peoples with him, right? So, him and all the people... They're running from this evil, really bad, evil king. I'm going to guess he was... Um, mm, you know. A devil. No, not the devil. Was it like Moses that was funny? Or was it just... It was a pharaoh. Mm. So, here's pharaoh. It's, that's, it's the king of Egypt. It's a king. Yeah. So we'll, I, we'll put on the nasty yeah, little crown. Because I remember a long time ago when I was watching The Prince of Egypt, uh -huh. um, um, there was this guy named Moses. He, he, he wasn't like the king because... He, he was a prince. Yeah, because prince. he was adopted. Yeah. So uh, so he like went into the church, so he ran. And me, he went to the desert. Um, different village. God, and, God, God, God chose, um, yeah, yeah, that's uh, the same story. God chose, uh, that's a, so he's writing, Moses? Moses. Wait, he, God chose Moses. Yeah, God chose Moses. Yeah. So, here's Moses. Okay, so, this is the bad king and all his armies and stuff. Um, and he's, he's chasing Moses. And here's an ocean. And uh, Pharaoh's attacking him, and, and so they're like freaking out because th these guys have weapons, but these other guys don't. So. Yeah, because they were just villagers that were working and they didn't want to say forever, so they just decided to be freedom fighters. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, something like that. Close enough. Close enough. All right, so. Um, so, um, so now they're running from him, and then it says, Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, stretched out his hand over the sea. 
And um, and all that night, God drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided. Yeah. Um, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. So mm -hmm. these guys, they walked through the giant sea. Somebody just knocked. End up over there. No. Nope. How can I knock? Oh, I just heard the noise. He's like, no, we're not there. He was just standing there. Okay. I'm just saying. So, here we have that. Uh, okay. Um, so, the Egyptians pursued them, and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. So, these evil guys, they went into the sea with them. Okay. And um, the Egyptians pursued them, and the pharaohs and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire in the cloud. The Egyptian army threw it into confusion. He made the wheels of the chariots come off so they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, Let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, then we flow out. And they went in the sea. Um, oh, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and their horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at daybreak the sea went back into its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not one of them had survived. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. When the Israelites saw the great power the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in, his, in, in Moses' his servant. Do you guys know what happened there? Yeah, um, I seen the movie of Moses because, like, he, uh, God chose him, so he leaded the people that were slaves uh, to free. Yeah. He, yeah, uh, he, God told him what to do so he could use powers uh, for good, uh, about, like, about, like, how to get through the river. You just, uh, mm -hmm. you, you just... He just made a big path, and he held out his hand, and uh, and like it was a hard time getting through with wagons and all. But mm -hmm. if it was hard to, for them to get through the villagers' wagons, then that meant then that meant that it would be very hard to get through with the enemies so with the enemy's wagons. Yeah, because when they tried to run, they kept breaking because the rocks were very sharp and stucky. Yeah, it says that the Lord threw them into confusion. And he made their chariot wheels fall off. Yeah. The, like, some villagers lost their wagons, but not all of them. Right. Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, all right. Does anybody want to read 15? I will read. Okay. Thanks, Mom. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has hurled into the sea. The best of Pharaoh's officers are drowned in the Red Sea. The deep waters have covered them. They sank to the depths like a stone. Wow. Your right hand, O oh Lord, was majestic in power. Your right hand, O oh Lord, shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you threw down those who opposed you. You unleashed your burning anger. It consumed them like stubble. 
By the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The surging waters stood firm like a wall. The deep waters revealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy boasted, I will pursue you. I will overtake them. I will divide the spoils. I will gorge myself on them. I will draw my sword, and my hand will destroy them. But you blew with your breath, and the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who among the gods is like you, O Lord? You, who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders? You stretch out your right hand, and the earth swallow them. In your unfailing love, you will lead the people you have redeemed. In your strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. The nations will hear and tremble. Anguish will grip the people of Philistia. The chiefs of Edom will be terrified. The leaders of Moab will be seized with trembling. The people of Canaan will melt away. Terror and dread will fall upon them. By the power of your arm, they will be as still as a stone. Mm. Until your people pass by, O oh Lord, until the people you brought, bought, pass by, you will bring them in and plant them on the mountain of your inheritance. The place, O oh Lord, you made for your dwelling. The sanctuary, O oh Lord, your hands establish. The Lord will reign forever and ever. Mm. Oh. When Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought waters of the sea back over them, but the Israelites walked through the sea on dry ground. Then Miriam the prophetess, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women followed her with tambourines and dancing. Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he is hurled into the sea. Then, you're saying it, so it'd be like, Sing to the Lord, for he's highly exalted. The horse and the riders in the sea. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the desert of Shur. For three days they traveled in the desert without finding water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. That is why the place is called Marah. So the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What are we to drink? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it in the water, and the waters became sweet or drinkable. There the Lord made a decree and a law for them, and there he tested them. He said, If you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord, your God, and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians. They brought, um, for I am the Lord who heals you. When they came to Elim, where there were twelve springs and seventy trees, and they camped near the water there. Elam. Oh. Elam. Elam. Well, cool, that was our passages. I think you like the singing part, Anna. <laughs> um, that was pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. Rock, you have any thoughts? Now what? Now we, I don't, any remarks, Mom Bryce? Yeah. Yeah, why? Well, yeah, that's good to know. I know of at least one. Promise. 
us to them, because we would take care of them. That's kind of my summary. Yeah. Well, that's a good summary. I didn't catch much of that. Tony was giving me a massage. He's really good at that. Oh, boy. No. <laughs> No. I'm jump in that phone right now and give you my phone. <laughs> I could do that. <laughs> did you hear that, Mom? No, I didn't hear that part. You said you would jump in that phone right now and give you a massage if you could. Oh, that's very nice. Um, <laughs> I would love that if you could. <laughs> so, yeah, and I think uh, to kind of the heart of the message is that it's kind of like you, you both have career requests for moving and you don't know where you're going to go in the same way the Egyptians they didn't know what was going to happen you know if they should stay or if they should go if they should buy the place um, and then the Lord parted the waters for them and they're kind of very kind of pertinent because the heart of the message is God will make a way when there seems to be no way he's testing us and he wants us to trust him when we can't see what's going to happen but he can and he's all powerful so he can make anything happen yes um, and he just wants her trust. So. Yeah, that's what I took away from it. So it was very nice to have that reaffirmed and be reminded again yeah. that um, God does that for all of us, and He has been doing that through the ages, and He will continue to do that mm. for generations to come. Yeah. Yeah. funny it's almost like that God could have given them immediately good waters to drink but he didn't he is he was like he, he wanted them to again call out he could have automatically you know refreshed them he could have made it to where they didn't even need water but but he didn't he wanted them um, to do this faith testing thing so he could prove to them that he was good and that he could provide and refresh them yes Interesting, he still does that to all of us to this day. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good. Picture. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's. <laughs> yeah. The Lord in heaven laughs, he holds the nations in derision. We might be freaking out and crying, but he's he's laughing and he's comfortable and in control. Yes. Well, shall we pray and end? Or any last comments? Not for me. Oh, I guess this is the end. This is the end. This is the end of all things. What do you mean all things in this last day? <laughs> last day ever. All right, let's let's pray. God, I uh, thank you for your word. Thank you that you lead us and guide us um, to still waters and not into bumpy, tumultuous waters, God. And I thank you that you provide for us and you make ways for us when we can't see a way. Um, and uh, I know we've all had prayer requests, and we've been going, what's going on? Uh, you know, but you, you're always faithful. You've always provided for us before. You're providing for us now. And you'll provide for us in the future, too. And so we, we thank you just for your provisions and your love for us. Um, and like the Israelites who are crossing the Red Sea, um, may we not be afraid of powerful things to our right and to our left, but may we walk straight ahead towards you and get closer to you and uh, get to know your heart for us more. Um, again, I thank you for Tony and Anna joining us. 
here in our community and here. And um, I pray that we would just be filled with you, filled with your spirit. And I uh, thank you for always providing for us here. Good, good God. We love you very much. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.